What's up everybody, my name is Thomas and welcome to my channel. I've just spent literally the last 12 hours doing something a little different for this channel and that has been editing your automotive photos. Just before I reveal, actually one second. That's a little better. Just before I reveal the photos that I've edited, remember that as much as I'm a professional videographer and photographer here in Canada that's been responsible for photos like these, I am by no means the best editor in the world and these edited photos are just my interpretation of what you guys have taken photos of. And secondly, because the people watching this video are either going to be car nuts, photography buffs, or people like me that are a mix of both, I should probably explain a couple of things first. Every single one of the photos that you're about to see were sent to me in a JPEG format. Now if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll give a short brief explanation. The photography standard is raw, so you want raw photos because there's a lot more detail and those are taken on cameras like mine which is a Canon DSLR and you can take those photos and do a lot more in post when you're editing them when you have a raw photo versus a JPEG photo for example you can pull a lot more out of the shadows in a raw photo than you can in a JPEG photo so that's just something to keep in mind when you're watching this video but I think you're gonna really like what I did with a lot of these edits even though I was limited to just JPEG files apart from one amazing person who sent me a raw photo and when it came to editing these photos I did that completely on Lightroom and Photoshop so Adobe software now if you don't know what those two to do, let me briefly explain. Lightroom is really good for making grass greener, skies bluer, faces brighter, or anything along those lines. Basically changing colors, manipulating lighting, and then Photoshop is really good if you want to take somebody's face and put them on another person's face, and you want to actually manipulate the photo and change things around. As an example, here's a photo that I shot of a 2019 Nissan Rogue for Auto Canada a little while ago. As you can see, I'm sticking my body out of the sunroof, and it looks like I'm throwing a ball for a couple of dogs, but the issue is there's no dogs in the photo. So I took a separate photo where I had the dogs where I wanted them and I used Photoshop to combine those two photos together and then I went into Lightroom and made the edits I wanted to make the photo the final product. All of that wouldn't have been possible unless I was using both programs. And lastly, thank you very much to the people that submitted their photos for this video. When I made the announcement about this, I said I would edit around a dozen for this video and lo and behold, it was meant to be exactly one dozen people submitted your photos. So thank you guys very much. There's something really fun about being a small YouTuber that I absolutely love because now I get to do all of your photos and it looks like you guys put a lot of time effort sweat blood and tears into these cars and into your rides and they're all beautiful and it really shows in the photos so everybody let's remember to keep the comments really positive down below when it comes to these people's cars so without any further ado if you're new here feel free to subscribe let's get right into these photos our first photo comes in from Josh, and when I saw the photo of this FJ Cruiser, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. Starting off in Lightroom, I threw a preset right onto this guy, and then from there I got into Photoshop and started cutting it out. By the way, Josh, I love the Hoonigan sticker. After cutting it out, I pasted it onto this tunnel background. After blending it in, fixing the colors, the lighting, and the shadows, I ended up with this. Here is the before and the after. This one by far took the longest out of any of the photos, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. Now, it didn't stop there because Josh sent me two more photos, one of a sport track, which if you you guys know me, I love my sport tracks. That was my first vehicle. I had to edit this one. And the second was another photo of his FJ Cruiser. Starting off with the FJ Cruiser, I essentially just cropped this down and changed the lighting a little bit to make it pop out. I also added some clarity and made sure to delete the car on the right hand side just to make it look like there was a little bit more room around Josh's FJ Cruiser. Added in some lens flare and a voila, you have the final product. Here is the before and the after. When it came to the sport track photo, even though this was shot at nighttime on a cell phone and a JPEG format, I wanted to do what I could to make this a very special photo. I started off in Lightroom, cropped it down a little bit, changed the lighting very subtly, added some clarity, and then moved on into Photoshop. I made sure to clean up as much as I could, including the yellow lines that were on the ground to make it look like it wasn't so much in a parking lot, as well as cleaning up just what I could around the tarmac, as well as on the grass. Then going back into Lightroom, I darkened the tarmac to make it look a little fresher, a little newer, like it was kind of just put there, and then I brightened up the greens a bit and lowered the shadows. And one of the last things I did was change up the lighting and color of the paint on this sport track because it was hanging around a very yellow light at nighttime and I wanted to make it look like it was more or less in natural lighting. So there you have it Josh, thank you very much for your submissions, beautiful photos, I love the sport track, the FJ Cruiser is also very cool and here are your three final products. The next photo is from Addison and Addison actually sent this to me in raw format, he's the one person that did that so Addison if you're watching this thank you very much for doing that, you made my day and this photo is going to be a lot cooler because of that. So Addison is actually a photographer 
photographer himself and has taken some beautiful photos and that means that he has his own edited version of this photo already. So this is the before and the after of what Addison did with this photo. Addison, fantastic photo, super cool edit and I'm glad you sent me both photos because it just goes to show and it will attest to the fact that different photographers and editors have very different takes on different photos because my one turned out pretty differently. Fun fact, Addison and I actually used to sit next to each other in social studies in grade 12 so dude it's really good to hear from you. I hope things are well and I love your photography so just keep things up. Also I never saw this car before but it's nice to see that you're driving around in a Nissan. Specifically this is a 2006 Nissan Xterra off-road edition and since this photo was taken he's put on mud tires and a lift kit so it's even cooler than this. But anyway let's just get into my edit. One of the first things I did in Lightroom was brighten this photo a lot and if you've never seen the effects of editing software on a raw photo then here is your first example going from a dark photo to this bright photo you wouldn't be able to do that with a JPEG because it just doesn't retain the detail in the shadows like that. From there I cropped it down and made it vertical versus a horizontal photo because I wanted Addison's Xterra to be the center of the focus for the viewer on this photo. From there I cleaned it up, changed some of the colors, brightened certain parts, added some contrasting clarity and I ended up with this. Here is the before and the after. Addison this was a beautiful photo thank you very much for your submission and I look forward to see what you do next with your photography skills. The next submission is from a gentleman called Patty. Now Patty just got this brand new GMC Sierra in August of 2019 so literally just a couple of months ago and I wanted to do something as special as possible for him to really set in stone the fact that he bought this brand new and beautiful vehicle. So Patty here is my edit. One of the first things I did in Lightroom was darken the tarmac just once again like I did with the sport track just to make it look new and fresh and really to bring the cracks out of the tarmac just to have that edgy powerful look around this brand new truck. The next thing I did was add some contrast and have some orange coming in from the top left corner across the entire photo to make it look a little sunnier, look like the sun is kind of rising or just maybe setting. I cropped it down to make the truck the center of the focus, added some clarity, and then in Photoshop I just cleaned it up, got rid of the yellow lines, some of the markings, and et voila, you have the final photo. Here is the before and the after. Patty, thanks so much for your submission. I hope that you like this edit as much as you like your brand new truck. Next up is a photo of a Ford Lightning that was submitted by a gentleman called Tim, and all Tim said was let's see what kind of magic you can work. All right, Tim, okay, I'll show you what I got. In the Lightroom, I pulled all of the saturation and color from everything that was a part of this photo apart from the actual lightning itself. Obviously, I kept those reds nice and juicy. From there, I just did some touch-up work and made the rims pop a little more and the headlights and whatnot, and then I took it into Photoshop. In Photoshop, I spelt out lightning and then went to Google and downloaded an entirely new graffiti type of text just for this photo. After applying the text to the word lightning, I added some color as well as a lightning bolt underneath the word lightning, merged the two together, stretched it out to look like it was a part of the tarmac, and from there I went after adding his Instagram handle to the background. For this, I had to delete the fueling victories part of the text in the background. After deleting that text, I had to add the high voltage Instagram handle to this photo, and I wanted to make it look like it was supposed to be there, but still kind of caught your eye after you looked at the photo for long enough. So I didn't merge it into the photo completely, I made it stand out just enough that if you looked at the photo, you would see it after a few seconds and realized what his Instagram handle was. From there, I took it back into Lightroom, and there you have it. This is what the final product looks like. Here is the before and the after. But obviously I wasn't done there. I had to make this look like the manliest photo in the world. So I went in and the red color just didn't do it for me. It was too feminine. I wanted a masculine color. So I changed the red to pink. There you have it, Tim. You're welcome. Obviously I'm kidding. Here you go, Tim. This is the final product of your Ford Lightning photo. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed editing it and as much as I enjoyed the look of your Ford Lightning. I really hope one day I can do a review video on one of those trucks because they are seriously fast and seriously cool. Next up is a submission from a guy called Thad who is from Indiana in the United States. Now Thad, if you're watching this and you're not the quarterback of a football team, then I need you to go and legally change your name because you can only have the name Thad if you're the quarterback of a football team. Now that's over, let's get into your photo. This photo was taken in front of a beautiful sunset and this is a 1992 Ford Thunderbird LX with a naturally aspirated 3.8 liter automatic. Dude, I love your car. This is a sick photo and when I was editing this, I didn't use Photoshop at all. I just used Lightroom for this photo because I thought it was so good already, didn't really need any cleaning up. Basically, I just brightened up the backgrounds, made the car stand out a little more, and after a little final touches here and there, adding some clarity and some brightness, I ended up with this. Here is the before and the after. 
Thad, thank you very much for your submission. It was an honor and a privilege being able to edit this photo. It was beautifully lined up. I didn't have to crop it at all. You did a fantastic job of capturing this just the way it should have been captured. Next up is a submission from David who sent me a photo of his Nissan. I started off in Lightroom by changing some of the colors as well as darkening the ground and then threw it into Photoshop. In Photoshop, I deleted the license plate from the front, the guy as well as the truck on the left hand side and then proceeded to cut out your Nissan and then moved the entire back of the image together to try and square off the image as much as possible instead of making it look like a panorama. I then pasted your truck back on, threw it back into Lightroom, and finished it up. And this is the final photo. And with this photo, I legitimately took it seriously. I didn't want to do anything silly with this photo because I felt like it wasn't done yet and it just needed an extra little step to make it that final photo. So yes, this is the final photo, but I made a second version with one of my presets that I added a couple other changes to it. So this is the before, this is the after, and then this is after I did my own own little edit at the end to change up some of the colors just to make it look a little different. David, I hope that you like at least one of these edits. I had a lot of fun editing your photos and thank you very much for your submission. Next up, Charles sent me two separate photos of his first gen Nissan Titan. In this first photo, I wanted to do something different. After darkening the image and taking away some of the colors in Lightroom, I put it into Photoshop and cut out the Titan on the left hand side. From there, I turned it into a sticker, added some text, blurred out the background, and added in some splashes into the background. And this is what I ended up with. This is a very cool truck. In this second photo, I also wanted to step out of the box a little bit, and I thought this was a beautiful image with this big dark tree in the background with his truck looking as small as possible on the side, even though this is a full size and what looks like a lifted truck with tons of mods, it looks microscopic next to this tree. So I wanted to make sure that the tree stood out, and from there, I changed the color of the green into more of a brownish orangish. For this photo, I took a lot from what I did with the example that I used at the beginning, because I changed all of the grass and trees to orange in that photo as well and I was very happy with how it turned out and I wanted to try something very similar with this photo as well. I think it turned out pretty well. It is definitely different from what you'd normally see. I am a big fan of it but Charles just in case you weren't a fan of it I made a second edit where I basically just darkened the greens, desaturated a little bit, made this truck stand out and darkened the tree and make it look a little more normal if you will. Thank you very much Charles for letting me edit your photos. That is one hell of a titan that you have there and the modifications are completely radical. I love the way they look and to wrap it up I have the final five submissions that I think were just a little easier and a little quicker to edit, so we'll blast through them. First up is a photo from Casey. This was Casey's first car that Casey had for over 10 years, but sadly, Casey had to get rid of it last year. Casey said it would be really nice to have a well done pic of her to maybe frame and keep safe. So I made sure to do the best job that I could with what I had. I also made sure to make the truck in the background seem as invisible as possible by darkening it and getting rid of a lot of the text and lines around it. Casey, here is your before and after. I also want to mention when Casey first got this car, it looked like this. And after a few years of working on it, it ended up looking like this. Casey, fantastic job looking after this car and improving it as you owned it. Next up was a submission from Michael. This is a 2014 Saab 93 Aero. This is definitely a more unique car, something you wouldn't see on the road quite a lot, and is currently over in Sweden. Michael, thank you very much for your submission. Here is your before and after. Next up is a photo from Julie. This is a Ford Explorer Sport Track, just the cooler version of of the first vehicle that I ever had and it was my dream a couple years ago to own one that was exactly like this in that same color. But it's funny because I've seen a couple around Calgary which is where I live and this background in the photo is actually downtown Calgary. So Julie, thank you very much for your submission. Here is your before and after. I hope to see you on the roads of Calgary. Next up is a submission from Corey who sent in a photo of this bright red Mustang. This one was a fun quick little edit just cleaning up bits and bobs here and there, changing a little bit of the color, making the Mustang stand out and and this is the before and after. Last but not least, this is a photo from Shane who sent in a photo of his 2004 Nissan Titan. Shane built this right from stock to where it is now and Shane, you've done a fantastic job. I love the rims and I love what you've done to this truck. Shane, thank you very much for your submission. Here is your before and after. And that's it. Those are all 12 individuals' photos and I'm so happy that I got to do everybody's photos. I had a lot of fun making this video and I plan on making this a series or at least doing another 
couple more episodes, especially because it currently looks like this outside. We are just getting our winter here in Calgary. It snowed like crazy the last couple days, so I'm gonna be doing more videos inside, talking about cars and possibly even editing your photos over the next few cold months until I can get out on the roads and review some more cars. So if you wanna know about the next time I do a video like this and you like travel, adventure, and automotive photography, then feel free to check me out on Instagram at official Thomas Warren. Thanks again for all the people that submitted their photos for this video. If you like what I do here on this channel, feel free to subscribe. And if you liked this video, then feel free to hit the like button. My name is Thomas and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.